Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I saw this on Facebook uh, just yesterday. Uh, this is from the holders of XRP Group, the digital asset for payments, uh, posted by Panos. I also follow Panos uh, on Twitter. A campaign by AMC investors was launched yesterday with many mobile billboard trucks in many places. Out front, the SEC office in LA, New York, DC, and Times Square, pointing out the SEC corruption. I think the XRP community should be doing the same. SEC, make crypto rules clear. I thought this was great. I don't have the link up, but uh, this is just a screen grab of what's going on downtown in front of the SEC offices. I guess I should take this time to also mention that uh, Working Money Channel also has a Facebook page. I mean, I don't really talk about it much, but uh, if you guys are uh, on Facebook, I'm at Working Money Channel on Facebook. I post all uh, my video updates there daily as well. Um, anyway, I just wanted to mention this. I thought that was kind of fun to see. Michael at Valve 5 Links also bringing this up. Bank of America survey reveals 90% planning to buy crypto this year. So despite the downturn, despite the complete 180 in prices uh, that we saw from uh, six months ago or so, retail is still getting very interested in buying cryptocurrency this year. So maybe people are learning, <laughs> maybe people are realizing bear market provides better crypto buying opportunities than bull markets and the majority of respondents to a recent Bank of America survey will be loading up this year. Jason Kupferberg, an analyst at Bank of America, told CNBC that the bank conducted a survey of a thousand U.S. adults earlier this month. The survey came after the collapse of the Terra ecosystem, but before this week's crypto capitulation. So important to note when that survey was taken. Uh, the results were surprising, given the current state of the markets. He said that it was interesting to see that 90% of respondents said that they plan to buy some amount of crypto in the next six months. He added that it was the same percentage that said they had bought some crypto over the previous six months. The Bank of America has no plans to offer its own cryptocurrency trading services. Uh, however, just a side note there, Bank of America is a Ripple partner. More payment methods, though. When asked for the reason that people want to buy crypto this year, Kupferberg said that an increase in crypto to fiat products, such as Coinbase's Visa card, has made payments easier, adding that it was a win-win for both consumers and merchants. He confirmed that Bitcoin and crypto were correlated to risk assets in general, such as high-growth tech stocks. Uh, there was the usual comparison with the beginnings of the internet during the dot-com boom. The reality is, and here's a quote, the reality is that there are too many crypto exchanges. There are too many cryptocurrencies and tokens. He said before adding, there's going to need to be some sort of consolidation. And I think Think that a lot of people right now are feeling a little overwhelmed. Um, and in just this morning's video, I talked a little bit about Gary Gensler. Now his focus is on the crypto exchanges and, you know, this fact that we are seeing everything kind of cascading conveniently one after another. First, we saw the Terra collapse last month and now the Celsius network. So what is the plan here? Are they quietly being nudged to unravel? Is this a controlled collapse? And are some influential powers involved in nudging this along? I'm just speculating here, but I am thinking that it is very, very convenient. If you guys didn't see that uh, video, I will link it up here in the top right-hand corner. Nevertheless, people aren't falling for it. The general public is saying, look, I'm interested in still buying cryptocurrency. Um, despite this, and this came out a couple of days ago now, Stefan Hubert bringing this up. So this journalist... Andy Kessler from the Wall Street Journal is seriously claiming that XRP is responsible for most 65% of total losses made of all digital assets in whole. What a clown. Here's a quote from that article. My spreadsheet isn't big enough to add up the total decline in value of all 79 digital assets since their peak, but XRP alone represents almost $65 billion in losses. My guess is the total loss is $100 billion for all assets, although not all of it traded on Coinbase on the way up once worth $100 billion. So completely negating uh, what else is going on in the crypto market. Of course, this seems to me like pure planned FUD. Um, and Stefan Hubert also <laughs> notices that Wall Street Journal was one of the sponsors here for the future of financial regulations with none other than, you guessed it. Um, okay, so that's uh, part of this story too. Luckily, we did just get a uh, short tweet thread here from Brad Garlinghouse yesterday. You know, chins up, folks. Days like today are never what you hope to see, especially in an industry with as much incredible talent as crypto. If you joined recently the industry and haven't seen a downturn like this, know that this too shall pass. Advice from someone who's seen a few downturns over the years. 
So first and foremost, Brad Garlinghouse is saying, you know, this is not the end of days. Uh, you know, the cryptocurrency market will rebound. And uh, again, for all those uh, TA guys, Rob Art comes to mind here. All those TA guys on Twitter that are saying, you know, this is now the time to buy. He's got his buy order set. And, uh, you know, he, I, I read one tweet that he, that he posted just, uh, just today, waiting for 70, 80, 90% corrections in order to enter some of his positions. And me, myself, I am waiting for the same. I am waiting for everything to consolidate. I think uh, the, the very easy way to do this is to wait for uh, Bitcoin, for example to reach its bottom and to essentially kind of peter out and move sideways uh, for a little while before I've decided, okay, that's the bottom. It happened back in 2019, early 2019, after this Bitcoin collapse. I was uh, mentioning this in this morning's video. That shelf, once we thought we had found the bottom, the capitulation, consolidation, and then it was to the upside. And that's where I bought the majority of my Bitcoin back in 2019. And if you guys notice, many cryptocurrencies followed, like XRP, if I just bring up XRP, here you can see uh, back uh, at that point in time, the drop down here, XRP consolidation down and around here. Of course, we did have the beer flu, which uh, brought XRP even lower. But a lot of these coins, right? I'll just bring up Ethereum real quickly. All seeing very low bottoms in and around that time that Bitcoin did also see its bottom. So that was around this period here. Okay, for Ethereum. And uh, I mean, I'm not getting too picky whether I bought up here, whether I bought here, whether I bought here. Um, you know, this is essentially very good entry, especially if you're holding long. Uh, if you're day trading, I would I would not suggest just kind of picking a random spot. But you know, if you're holding for the long term, waiting to see those mega gains, you know, whether you buy at, I mean, I got my Bitcoin at 3,200, but whether I bought at 32 or 3,900 or 4,100, I don't really care. Personally, for me, it's a long-term hodl anyway. Um, so back to Brad's point here, it's never easy, but there are a few key reasons why Ripple has weathered the cyclical bear markets as we will do here and continue growing. One, having an experienced exec team that has been through the dot-com bubble, 2008 financial crisis, and 2018 crypto winter and more. Two, focusing on the long-term, Ripple has been building enterprise products with long-term utility in not speculation. These are products that solve problems today, not ones in search of problems. FYI, quarter two ODL volume well over $1 billion. Already surpassed its target three weeks before EOQ. Number three, operating with transparency. As a holder of XRP, we believe communication and transparency, including our quarterly market reports, are key to being a responsible stakeholder. We've been asking for regulatory clarity for years and been upfront about what is and is not working. Four, paying attention. What's happening now is not a small market gyration. We've been preparing for this with a significant cash balance and thus can afford to keep hiring the best talent with the goal of 50% outside the United States. The market is likely going to shrink in the near term, guys. So Brad Garlinghouse is even stating all those cryptocurrencies, you know, the 19,000 plus cryptocurrencies that exist today is going to shrink. That number is going to shrink 99% of cryptos, as famously mentioned by Brad Garlinghouse and others, uh, are going to fall to the wayside. Those are going to be the crypto projects that will dissolve and that money will have to go somewhere and it's going to go into projects that actually solve problems. He says that'll happen in the near term, but I and many others have every ounce of confidence that crypto will succeed in the future as an integral part of our global financial systems. Slow and steady wins the race. It is happening right now. XRP Crypto Wolf brought this up and I never ever thought that I would see this happen to an OG cryptocurrency like Litecoin. Five crypto exchanges are going to delist Litecoin due to its new privacy features. So this coming from Procoin News here. So far, it has been reported that five South Korean crypto exchanges have decided to delist Litecoin as a result of the token's recent MWEB upgrade. The reasoning is that this MWE upgrade violates the country's laws as it would essentially make Litecoin transactions anonymous. So they upgraded the coin to make it more anonymous, but this is now going against the regulatory clarity uh, in South Korea in this particular case but I'm sure that uh, this is not going to be limited to South Korea uh, as we're starting to see more cryptocurrency regulatory clarity, especially the KYC stuff. Uh, the five exchanges that have delisted Litecoin so far are Upbit, BitThumb, CoinOne, Corbit, and Copax, which make up a sizable amount of trading volume. Lots of government and regulatory entities seem to be uneasy about the fact that there can be a blockchain network that allows transactions to be anonymous, as there has been a lot of debate about this topic in the past in the United States as well. 
So, delisting Litecoin. Wow, I never thought I would see that coming. Um, but I guess it is because of this new upgrade that they're talking about here. Also, guys, with regards to the crypto market, Michael at Val5Links bringing this to our attention. Tron's USDD stablecoin loses its dollar peg amid extreme downturn in the crypto market. So the cascading effect continuing. Tron's algorithmic stablecoin, USDD, has raised fears and speculation in the crypto market after its price dipped to 97 cents and lost its peg to the dollar. Justin Sun, the founder of Tron, quickly responded via a tweet that the Tron DAO would deploy $2 billion to protect TRX from the funding rate of shorting it on Binance. He followed up with a tweet that 700 million USDC has been injected to defend the USDD peg. So these guys are working overtime trying to defend their projects. And, um, you know, this is playing right into the hands of regulators in the United States. Again, if you guys didn't see this morning's video, I urge you to watch it. Last month, UST Luna, an algorithmic coin like USDD, crashed and wiped out $18 billion off the crypto market. This crash came after it struggled to maintain its UST $2 peg and fell to $0.35 cents on May the 9th. So are we going to be seeing more of the same with all these other uh, algorithmic stable coins? This one uh, is connected to Tron and Justin Sun. So just another example of market turmoil, guys. But I have confidence, I have faith, you know, because I invest in cryptocurrencies that solve problems, the ones that are not going to be wiped out, the 1% of coins that are likely going to remain, my favorite one, of course, XRP, because of the strong fundamentals, as we've uh, just heard from Brad Garlinghouse mention in this tweet thread here. And Brad wasn't the only one mentioning it. Bubba Cug's posting this, retweeting out CNBC's tweet here. A lot of projects you see going on here are going to go to zero. The scams, the charlatans, the easy money guys. Those people are going to get shaken out of the market in the next six months. And you're starting to see that now, guys. This coming from Brian Brooks, Crypto Tumbles, as Celsius pauses withdrawals. Listen to Brian Brooks. And I've been saying for two or three years now that in crypto, a lot of the projects you see going on here are going to go to zero. But there are Amazon.coms in there somewhere, right? Things, you know, the major protocol layers, the significant network technologies, those are going to make it out here stronger than ever two years from now. But things are going to get shaken out now. The scams, the charlatans, the easy money guys, those people are going to get shaken out in the next six months. And you're starting to see that now. Boom goes the dynamite. Things we've been hearing for years now. It's almost like Brad Garlinghouse had a crystal ball when he stated this. I think the first time I heard him state that 99% of cryptocurrencies are going to get wiped out. I think the first time I heard that was back in 2018. And now, guys, in this downturn, in this latest downturn, it's a perfect storm because the market is collapsing. Regulators are on the cusp of regulating cryptocurrencies. So is this going to be the time? And more importantly, is this the time to now buy up the projects that we see have real value like XRP, like XLM, Cardano's ADA, Algorand, just to name a few. Of course, that's where I have my sights on. Uh, some of you guys may have other favorites that you're looking to buy up. And I got to tell you, it doesn't look like Brad Garlinghouse is uh, too worried about the crypto crash. 2022 posted this on Twitter. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse giving a high five to Draymond Green. Glad he's enjoying life, and uh, you guys can see right there. Check him out. Brad Garlinghouse right up here. High five. There you go, buddy. Yeah, good job. Good job. So Brad was at the Warriors game, not worrying too much about the crypto market. He feels confident, obviously. XRP is in it for the long game. Are you cost averaging down? Tell me down in the comments what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.